Hi guys, and welcome to GP Academia. We have discussed how motion is described in terms of velocity and acceleration. That is under the study of kinematics. Now, we will discuss dynamics, which is the connection between force and motion. For this video lecture, this is the outline of the topics. Let's start. In kinematics, we have discussed how motion is described in terms of velocity and acceleration. Now, in dynamics, it is the study of how forces influence the motion. And this field involves investigating forces due to the interaction of two or more objects. We will start by discussing the three laws of motion here in this video lecture. Intuitively, we experience a force as any kind of a push or a pull on an object as illustrated here in my drawing. A force is just an interaction between two objects or between an object, this one, and its environment. A force is a vector quantity with magnitude and direction. And we can classify force into two. So we have contact forces, which is exerted when one object comes in contact with another object. While we also have force of gravity, which is a non contact force, and this is due to the gravity. Let's start with the first law of motion. It states that every object continues in its state of rest or of uniform velocity in a straight line as long as no net force acts on it. And Newton's first law is also called the law of inertia. So inertia is a term which means uh, this is the tendency of an object to maintain its state of rest or of uniform velocity in a straight line. And one example of this uh, is, let's say, a school bus comes to a sudden stop and all of the backpacks on the floor start to slide forward. And what force causes them to do that? So the answer is, by Newton's first law, the backpacks continue their state of motion, maintaining their velocity. We can express this mathematically as follows. So we have the summation of forces, uh, given that the net force on an object is zero. So then the velocity of the object is constant, which means that the derivative of your velocity with respect to time is zero. Uh, Newton's first law is valid only in an inertial reference frame, which means that this reference frame is not accelerating. We will usually use a certain reference frame attached to the Earth's surface as the laboratory frame, so that's the term. But this is not, in fact, an inertial frame given that the Earth is rotating and thus accelerating. But, you know, we can assume it negligible for our calculation. Now, let's try to differentiate mass and weight. It is a common practice to weigh objects in grams or kilograms. This is incorrect since weight is measured in newtons, not kilograms. However, given that mass and weight are proportional, so there's no uh, great harm done comparing things. Let's start with mass. And this is the weight. So mass refers to the quantity of matter, and it is a measure of the inertia of an object. The more mass an object has, the greater the force needed to give it a particular acceleration. Your mass is the same no matter where you go in the universe. On the other hand, for your weight, uh, your weight changes from place to place. Okay? So mass is measured in kilograms, even though we usually talk about weight in kilograms. But st strictly speaking, it should be measured in newton, uh, which is the unit of force. Let's now talk about second law of motion. So it states that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and is inversely proportional to the object's mass. If a net force F acts on an object of mass M, the object will have acceleration A. This is for objects and systems with constant mass M. So please take note of that. Therefore, we can write this equation into this form. The summation of the forces is equal to ma. The second law can also be stated 
as the rate of change of momentum of a body over time. And this is directly propor uh, proportional to the applied force. Using this definition, we can restate the second law wherein the net force is proportional to the acceleration as shown here. The third law of motion states that whenever one object exerts a force on a second object, the second object exerts an equal force in the opposite direction on the first. And the two forces, uh, let's say, uh, shown here in the figure, act on different objects. And therefore, we have different uh, colors of the forces as shown here. So for this case, we have this stick man or stick person and uh, pushing or exerting force on the wall as shown in green. Then the wall exerts an equal uh, amount of force in the opposite direction. So this is the force exerted by the wall on the skater. And of course, uh, this is ice. And we have uh, here the, the force now for this stick person. Now, uh, this stick person is walking and we have a horizontal force exerted on the person's foot uh, by the ground. So this one or and then we have this force going to the left which is exerted on the ground by the person. We will now discuss different types of forces uh, that may be useful to us when we solve mechanics problem. First, we have the normal force. So we have this uh, illustration and another illustration at the right. We have here this uh, flat surface, this slanted surface, then we have this object green or it's just a box. Then we have this normal force F sub N. When an object pushes on a surface, the surface pushes back on the object perpendicular to the surface as shown here. So this is perpendicular with respect to this surface. And this is a contact force. Okay. Next, we have friction force. So this force occurs when a surface receives sliding of an object and is parallel to the surface. Friction is a type of a contact force. And this is the friction F or small f. Then we can define uh, two types of coefficient of friction. The first coefficient is the coefficient of kinetic friction. This one. And this is defined for the case in which one surface is sliding across another at constant speed. We have here another coefficient. So this is the coefficient of static friction. And this is defined for the case in which one surface is just on the verge of sliding across another surface. Third type of force is tension force. So we have this uh, illustration. A pulling force exerted on an object, let's say by a rope or cord, uh, is called a tension force as uh, illustrated here with this variable uh, T. This is a type of a contact force. So number four, or for the last one for this lecture is weight. And we have this illustration for that. So this is uh, going down with this uh, symbol W for the weight. And this is the pull of gravity on an object. Uh, this is a long range force and not a contact force. When solving problems involving forces, first step is to illustrate the problem. You can draw a car, ball, or people involved in the problem. Next is to identify the external forces on the system. I want to highlight here that uh, internal forces such as forces on the atoms in the object is not included in our study of mechanics. We will often encounter gravity, a friction, normal force exerted by the surface and tensions due to the ropes. And we can show this through a force diagram or a free body diagram. Let's start with this uh, first uh, example. So let's say we have a box at rest on the table. Illustrated here, uh, this is the box and this is the surface and we have two forces and this is the free body diagram. We have an upward normal force then we have this downward gravitational force. 
we expect that because there is no uh, acceleration along the y-axis, therefore, the normal force and the gravitational force are equal to each other in terms of magnitude. So next, uh, we have here the next illustration, which is uh, a box attached to a rope uh, hangs from a certain ceiling. So this is the ceiling, this is the box, and this is the rope. In this uh, scenario, we can define first the weight or the gravitational force, which is downward, so this one. And then we have this tension force due to the uh, string or due to the rope, uh, which is this pink line here. Now let's use the illustration uh, for number one, and let's say uh, let's say we have an applied uh, force pushing the box to the right at constant speed, meaning the acceleration is zero along the horizontal. So we have this applied force, then we have this uh, friction force, okay, and given that it has a constant speed, therefore there's no acceleration, okay. Then for the last uh, example of a free body diagram, so we have this box sliding down on a frictionless incline shown here. Then we have this normal force as our first force. Then we have this downward weight. Okay, now let's try to apply the concepts of dynamics uh, in solving a problem. So this is the equilibrium problem and we have this condition. So for this uh, equilibrium problem, the acceleration is equal to zero, meaning the object is either at rest or at constant velocity v. Let's try this problem. So given a coefficient of friction between a load of sand and the bed of truck in which it is carried is about 1.30. So we are given with this coefficient of friction, calculate the angle to horizontal does the, the, does the truck bed have to be tilted before the sand starts to slide out. And this is the illustration of the problem together with the free body diagram. We want to find this angle theta given this forces. We have this friction force given that uh, we have this coefficient of friction. We have this normal force and we have the weight of the load or, or, or the sand for, for this case. Now, we'll now get first the uh, the components of our weight. So we have this W sine theta for the component of your weight along the surface. Then we have this W cosine theta for the component of W that is aligned to the normal force. And we will assume this rotated uh, coordinate system where in the positive X is in parallel with the surface. And we have this uh, positive Y perpendicular to the surface. First step is, of course, to get the components of our forces along the x, which is equal to 0, then along the y, which is equal to 0. For the y components, we have this equation. So the normal force, n, which is positive for this case, minus w cosine theta, which is downward, that's why it is negative, and this is equal to 0, given that acceleration is equal to 0. For the case of the forces involved in or along the x-axis, so we have first the friction force going to the right, therefore it is positive, minus w sine theta, and this is equal to zero given our equilibrium uh, case. And we can substitute uh, for the friction force the coefficient of friction mu times the normal force n minus w sine theta is equal to zero. We have these two equations for this equilibrium problem, and we can uh, divide it uh, to get this expression. And therefore, we can get tangent theta is equal to mu, which is equal to 1.3 for our case. And therefore, the value of theta is equal to 52.4 degrees. So next, uh, the application of dynamics in non-equilibrium problems. So for this case, the acceleration is not equal to zero. So therefore, we have an acceleration. And we can use, of course, our second law expression and our kinematics equation uh, for these types of problem. Let's try this problem. A block of masses M1 and M2 are connected by a light string. 
the coefficient of friction between M1 and the table surface is mu. So determine the acceleration of the blocks and the tension in the string if the mass 1 is equal to 5 kilograms, M2 is equal to 4 kilograms, and mu is equal to 0 0.40. For this scenario, we can illustrate it as follows. So this is the illustration. We have mass 1, mass 2, and we have this string. So therefore, we can draw the free body diagram by observing the forces involved for mass 1 first, then followed by the mass 2. For mass 1, we have the normal force, we have the weight, then we have the tension, and of course, the friction, given that we have this mu here. Therefore, uh, this is the free body diagram. We have the tension T, normal force N, the weight M1G, then we have the friction going to the left. Okay? For the case of M2, we have the tension here, then we have a downward weight. So therefore, we have M2G for the weight and we have an upward uh, tension T. For this case, uh, we will assume that the acceleration here for this part is going to the right, then the acceleration here is going downward. Taking note of our free body diagram created earlier, as shown here. So for M1, we have this equation. So N is equal to M1G, given that the acceleration along the vertical here is equal to zero. Okay? We only have acceleration along the horizontal. So for the horizontal uh, components, so we have, of course, a friction that can be uh, expressed in terms of of the normal force, which is equal to M1G, as we stated here. Then we have here the coefficient of friction. Okay, So next, we, we have this expression for the forces involved along the X for M1. So we have T, which is going to the right. Then we have negative F, which is going to the left. So uh, rewriting or re-expressing this equation, so we have T minus mu M1G, which is equal to M1A. So for M2, we have, uh, or we'll use the same uh, technique. So we have T going up minus M2G, the weight, which is equal to M2A. So the A here is negative given that the mass 2 is going downward, therefore the acceleration is going downward, thus it is negative. And therefore we can express the tension here as T is equal to M2G minus M2A. So we have two equations 1 and 2 here and we can solve for A using a systems of equation and therefore we have this expression for A. So using the expression for the acceleration, we know the value of our masses M1 and M2, the coefficient of friction is given, we know the constant G, therefore A here is equal to about 2.18 meters per second squared. For the case of tension, we can use equation 1 that uh, we have shown earlier. We can get this expression for the tension, and we now know the value of A. Therefore, the value of tension is about 30.5 newtons. And that's it for this lecture. Thank you. Hi! If you have learned something in this video and you like my content, please consider subscribing my YouTube channel, JT Academia. See you in the next video.